What is ethylene oxide used for and why is it dangerous? Ethylene oxide, ETO, is a colorless, flammable gas primarily used to sterilize medical equipment and manufacture certain chemicals. While highly effective, ethylene oxide exposure has been linked to severe health risks, including cancer and neurological damage, raising significant concerns for communities and workers near emission sites. In this video, we'll discuss what ethylene oxide ETO is, what it is used for, the dangers of exposure to ethylene oxide emission, health effects of ETO exposure, legal options for individuals exposed to ethylene oxide, chronic exposure to ETO linked to cancer and other injury. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, classifies ethylene oxide as a group one human carcinogen, indicating clear evidence that it can cause cancer in humans. Inhaled ethylene oxide has been linked to an increased risk of breast cancer, leukemia, lymphatic and hematopoietic cancers, and other severe health conditions, especially for those with occupational exposure in sterilization facilities. Communities living near plants that emit ETO are also at risk, facing community exposure that may elevate cancer rates over time. Studies show that even low levels of ethylene oxide exposure can cause genetic mutations, respiratory irritation, and long-term health complications. Despite these risks, ETO remains a widely used chemical, including the medical field where it is used to sterilize heat-sensitive equipment without causing damage. ETO's Industrial Uses Ethylene oxide is a chemical intermediate used in the production of other chemicals, notably ethylene glycol, which is essential for manufacturing antifreeze, polyester fibers, and polyethylene terephthalate. ETO synthesizes diethylene glycol, glycol ethers, and ethanolamines, which serve as solvents, detergents, and emulsifiers in numerous products. ETO is also used to produce ethylene dichloride, a precursor for vinyl chloride monomer and sulfuric acid, a vital industrial chemical. Most notably, in the medical field, ETO's ability to sterilize heat-sensitive equipment makes it indispensable for ensuring the sterility of medical devices. Industrial applications of ethylene oxide. Sterilization of medical equipment ensures the sterility of heat-sensitive medical devices. Production of ethylene glycol, used in antifreeze and polyester manufacturing. Synthesis of diethylene glycol and glycol ethers serve as solvents and in the production of paints and coatings. Manufacture of ethanolamines, utilized in detergents, emulsifiers, and gas treatment. Creation of ethylene dichloride, a precursor for PVC plastics. Production of sulfuric acid, an essential chemical in various industrial processes. Fumigation of spices and cosmetics, used to eliminate microbial contaminants. Production of glycol ethers, applied in brake fluids, cleaners, and as solvents. ETO Safety Standards ETO is abled by the EPA as a Group 1 human carcinogen listed under the Toxic Substances Control Act TSCAA, and regulated to limit emissions from industrial facilities. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHAA, has established exposure limits to minimize occupational exposure risks. Despite these measures, community exposure remains a concern, particularly near facilities that emit ETO due to its potential health hazards. Given its widespread use and potential health risks, understanding ETO's applications and associated hazards is crucial for both industry professionals and communities. The Regulatory Framework for Ethylene Oxide ETO ETO is a highly regulated chemical due to its carcinogenic properties and the environmental risks it poses. Federal agencies and state-level environmental protection departments enforce strict guidelines to control ETO emissions and protect public health. The EPA classifies ethylene oxide as a hazardous air pollutant HAP, under the Clean Air Act. This designation subjects ETO emitting facilities to stringent emissions controls under the National Emission Standards for Hazardous Air Pollutants NESHAP. NESHAP. Regulations mandate the use of emissions control technologies like scrubbers and dry bed systems to capture and neutralize ETO before it enters the atmosphere. Facilities are required to report emissions annually under the Toxic Release Inventory TRI program which tracks the release of hazardous chemicals. 
In 2022, the EPA proposed new amendments to further limit emissions from commercial sterilizers, citing enhanced scientific evidence of ATO's carcinogenic risks. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA, enforces safety standards to protect workers from ethylene oxide exposure. OSHA's permissible exposure limit, PEL, for ETO is set at 1 part per million ppm as an 8-hour time weighted average, 5 ppm as a short-term exposure limit for 15-minute periods. OSHA also requires the use of personal protective equipment, regular air monitoring, and medical surveillance for employees working in environments where ETO is present. Some states have adopted even stricter regulations in response to community concerns. For instance, Illinois EPA requires enhanced air monitoring near the Sterogenics Willowbrook facility and mandates periodic reporting of ETO emissions. Georgia Environmental Protection Division enforces additional emission controls at the Sterogenics Smyrna plant and requires compliance with the state's air quality regulations. California Air Resources Board sets lower ETO emission limits and conducts community air monitoring near sterilization facilities. Facilities using ETO must regularly report their emissions to the EPA's TRI program, which publicly discloses data on hazardous air pollutants. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry also tracks community exposure and assesses long-term health impacts. Due to the growing body of evidence linking ETO exposure to increased cancer risks, federal agencies are reviewing current standards. Proposed changes may include lowering the PELs for occupational exposure, increasing the frequency of air quality monitoring in high-risk areas, Expanding community right to note programs to ensure residents are informed of potential health risks. Facilities that fail to meet regulatory standards face fines, mandatory emission reduction plans, and potential shutdowns. How ETO is used to sterilize medical equipment. ETO is a potent alkylating agent widely used to sterilize medical equipment and supplies that are sensitive to heat and moisture. Its molecular properties allow it to disrupt the DNA and protein structures of microorganisms, rendering them inactive and preventing the risk of infection. This makes ETO particularly effective for sterilizing single-use medical devices, surgical instruments, and complex electronic components that cannot withstand the high temperatures of steam sterilization. The process relies on ETO's high vapor pressure which enables the gas to permeate tightly sealed packaging and reach internal cavities of medical devices. Community exposure to ethylene oxide, long-term health effects and environmental impact. ETO emissions from commercial sterilization facilities are a major source of community exposure. Unlike industrial settings where workers face direct contact, community exposure occurs through airborne emissions of the colorless gas that travel beyond facility boundaries. Medical sterilization plants, chemical manufacturing facilities, and other industrial sites emit ETO into the atmosphere during sterilization cycles and aeration phases. These emissions can occur during the sterilization process or from leaks and venting. This release allows the gas to disperse into surrounding neighborhoods where residents may unknowingly inhale contaminated air. Residential areas, schools, and workplaces within close proximity, typically within a 1-5 to five mile radius, are considered high-risk zones. Studies have shown that areas within several miles of ATO-emitting facilities may experience elevated concentrations of the gas. Short-term health effects. Acute exposure ETO, particularly at elevated concentrations, can lead to immediate health concerns affecting multiple body systems. Individuals living near emission sites often report symptoms such as respiratory system, irritation of the nasal passages, throat, and lungs. In severe cases, this may progress to pulmonary edema, a condition characterized by fluid accumulation in the lungs, leading to difficulty breathing and reduced oxygen exchange. Nervous system, central nervous system depression, manifesting as headaches, dizziness, nausea, fatigue, and lack of coordination. Gastrointestinal tract, symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea have been reported, often secondary to the neurotoxic effects of ETO rather than direct irritation of the gastrointestinal tract. Sensory irritation, exposure can lead to eye irritation and skin rashes. Children, the elderly, 
and those with compromised immune systems are especially vulnerable to the acute effects of ETO inhalation. Long-Term Health Effects Chronic exposure to ETO, even at lower concentrations, has been associated with several serious health outcomes. Chronic inhalation of ETO has been linked to various forms of cancer, including lymphomatopic cancers, breast cancer, nervous system effects, reproductive and developmental toxicity, hematological effects, stomach cancer, pancreatic cancer. Beyond cancer, long-term exposure has been associated with neurological damage, reproductive toxicity, and genetic mutations. Studies have demonstrated that even low-dose, long-term exposure can lead to DNA damage, cellular mutations, and increased risks of miscarriage and infertility. Radius of exposure and environmental factor. Generally, communities within a one to five mile radius are at the highest risk, with air modeling showing detectable levels of ETO far beyond facility boundaries. Wind patterns, atmospheric stability, and local topography all influence how ETO disperses. For example, higher wind speeds can carry emissions further, while valleys or low-lying areas may trap ETO, leading to prolonged and cumulative exposure. Ambient air monitoring around facilities like the Sterogenics plant in Smyrna, Georgia, has recorded fluctuating levels of ETO at various distances, understoring the need for continuous environmental assessments. Understanding the scope and scale of community exposure to ETO is crucial for assessing health risks and building strong legal claims. Ethylene Oxide Exposure Lawsuits Overview Torherman Law is actively investigating ethylene oxide exposure lawsuits on behalf of individuals and communities affected by emissions from sterilization facilities across the United States. Ethylene oxide lawsuits focus on allegations that companies like Sterogenics negligently released hazardous levels of ETO, exposing nearby residents and workers to a known carcinogen linked to serious illnesses such as breast cancer, leukemia, and lympha. Communities residing near ETO-emitting facilities, such as those in Willowbrook, Illinois, and Smyrna, Georgia, have reported elevated cancer rates and other health issues attributed to long-term exposure. Torhorman Law is committed to holding these companies accountable for allegedly failing to adequately control emissions and warn the public about the associated health risks. We are currently accepting new clients who have been diagnosed with ETO-related illnesses and lived or worked near facilities known for ETO emissions. If you or a loved one has been affected, our legal team offers free consultations to evaluate your case and discuss potential compensation for medical expenses, lost wages, and other damages. Contact your Horman Law today to learn more about your rights and options regarding ethylene oxide exposure lawsuits you can also use the chat feature on our website, thlawyer.com, to find out if you qualify for an ethylene oxide exposure claim instantly. Instantly.